Acts chapter 15 Council at Jerusalem And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren, and said, Except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved. When therefore Paul and Barnabas had no had no small dissension and dispution with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem unto the apostles and elders about this question. And being brought on their way by the church, they passed through Phineas and Samaria, declaring the conver conversion of the Gentiles, and they caused great joy unto all the brethren. And when they were come to Jerusalem, they were received of the church and of the apostles and elders, and they declared all things that God had done with them. But they rose there they rose, but there they rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees, which believed, saying, that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. And the apostles and elders came together for to consider of this matter. And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, ye know how that a good while ago God made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God, which knoweth the heart, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us, and put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Now, therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear. But we believe that through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ we shall be saved, even as they. Then all the multitude kept silence and gave audience to Barnabas and Peter, declaring what miracles and wonders God had wrought among the Gentiles by them. Judgment of James. And after they had held their peace, James answered, saying, Men and brethren, hearken unto me. Simon had declared how God at the first did visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people of his name for his name. And to and to disagree the words of the prophets, as it is written. After this I will return and will build up again the tabernacle of David, which is fallen down. And I will build again the ruins thereof, and I will set it up, that the residue of men might seek after the Lord. And all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called, said the Lord, who do it all these things. Know unto God all are all his works from the beginning of the world. Wherefore my sentence is that we trouble not them, which from, um, which from among the Gentiles are turned to God, but that we write unto them that they abstain from pollutions of idols and from fornication and from things strangled and from blood. For Moses of old time had in every city them that preached him, being said in the synagogue every Sabbath day, letter to the churches. Then pleased it the apostles and elders with the whole, whole church to send chosen men of their own company to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas, namely Judas, surname Barabbas and Silas, chief men among the brethren. And they wrote letters by them after 
this manner. The apostles and the elders and brethren sent greeting unto the brethren, which are the Gentiles in Antioch, in Syria, and Thessalia. For as much as we have heard that certain which went out from us have troubled you with words, subverting your soul, saying, Ye must be circumcised and keep the law, to whom we gave no such commandment. It seemed good unto us, being assembled with one accord to send chosen men unto you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, men that have hazarded their lives for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have sent therefore Judas and Celius, who shall also tell you the same things by mouth, for it seemed good to the Holy Ghost and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things, that ye abstain from meats offered to idols, and from blood, and from things strangled, and from fornication from which if ye keep yourselves, ye shall do well, far ye well. So when they were dismissed, they came to Antioch, and when they had gathered the multitude together, they delivered the epistle, which when they had read, they rejoiced for the consolation. And Judas and Celius, being prophets also themselves, exhorted the brethren with many words and comforted conformed them and after they had tarried there a space they were let go in peace from the brethren unto the apostles notwithstanding it pleased Silius to abide there still paul also and barnabas continued in antioch teaching and preaching the word of the lord with many others also second missionary journey and some days after paul said unto barnabas let us go again and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the lord and see how they do and barnabas determined to take with them john whose surname was mark but Paul thought not good to take him with him, with them, who departed from them from Pamphylia, and went not with them to the work. And the contention was so, so sharp between them that they departed asunder one from the other. And so Barnabas took Mark and sailed unto Cyprus and Paul, chose Celius and departed being recommended by the brethren unto the grace of God. Churches revisited, and he went through Caesarea and Cecilia confirming the churches. Acts chapter 16 Then came he to Derbe, and Lystra, and behold, a certain disciple was there, named Timotheus, the son of a certain woman, which was a Jewish, and believed, but his father was Greek, which was well reported of by the brethren that were at Lysteria and Iconium. Him would Paul have to go forth with him, and do, took and circumcised him because of the Jews which were in those quarters, for they knew all that his father was a Greek. And as they went through the cities, they delivered them to the Greeks for to keep that were ordained of the apostles and at elders which were at Jerusalem. And so were the churches established in the faith and increased in number daily. Now when they had gone throughout 
Peripheria, Geria, and the region of Galtia, and were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia. After they were come to Mysia, they essayed to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit suffered them not, and they, passing by Mestia, came down to Troza. And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. There stood a man of Macedonia, and prayed him, saying, Come over into Macedonia and help us. And after he had seen the vision, immediately we endeavored to go into Macedonia. Assuredly, gathering that the Lord had called us to, for, for, to preach the gospel unto them. Therefore, losing from Troza, we came with a straight course of to Samtricia, and the next day to Neapolis, and from thence to Philippi, which is the chief city of that part of Macedonia, and a colony. And we were in the city, abiding certain days, and on the Sabbath we went out of the city by a river side, where prayer was wont to be made. And we sat down and spoke unto the women which resorted th thither. And a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple, of the city of Ty Tydra, which worshipped God, heard us. Those whose heart the Lord opened, that she attended unto the things which were spoken of Paul. And when she was baptized in her household, she besought us, saying, If ye have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house and abide there. And she constrained us. And it came to pass, as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with the spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. The same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which shew unto us the way of salvation. And this did she many days. But Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And she and he came out the same hour. And when her masters saw that the hope of their gains was gone, they caught Paul and Celius and drew them into the marketplace unto the rulers and brought them to the magistrate, saying, These men, being Jews, do exceedingly trouble our city and teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive neither to observe being Romans and the multitude rose up together against them and the ma ma magistrates rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them and when they had laid many stripes upon them they cast them into prison charging the jailer to keep them safely who, having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison, and made their feet fast in the, the stocks. And at midnight Paul and Celius prayed and sang, Praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately, <coughs> Immediately, all the doors were open, and everyone, and everyone, bands were loosened, <coughs> and the keeper of the prison, awaking out of his sleep, and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out of his sword, 
end <coughs> would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light and sprung in, and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Celius, and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. And they spoke unto him the word of the Lord, and to all that were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night, and washed their stripes, and was baptized, he and all his straightway, and when he had brought them into his house, he set meat before them, and rejoiced, believing in God with all his house. And when it was day, the magistrates sent, sent the surgeons, saying, Let those men go. And the keeper of the prison told this saying to Paul, the magistrates have sent to let you <coughs> go. Now, therefore, depart and go in peace. But Paul said unto them, They have beaten us openly uncondemned, being Romans, and have cast us into prison. And now to thy trust us out of privilege. Nay, rarely, but let them come themselves and fetch us out. And the surgeons told these words unto the magistrate, and they feared. When they heard that they were Romans, and they came and besought them, and brought them out, and desired them to depart out of the city. And they went out of the prison and entered into the house of Sir Lydia. And when they had seen the brethren, they comforted them and departed. Acts chapter 17 Thessalonica and Beria Now when they had passed through Ephelopolis and Apollonia, Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, where was a synagogue of the Jews. And Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them, and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the scriptures, opening and alleging that Christ must, must needs have suffered and risen again from the dead, and that this and that this Jesus, whom I preach unto you, is Christ. And some of them believed and consorted with Paul and Celius. And of the devout Greeks, a great multitude, and of the chief women, not a few. But the Jews, which believed not, moved with envy, took uncertain, dumb, certain, loot fellows of the baser sort and gathered a company and set all the city on an uproar and assaulted the house of Jason and sought to bring them out up to the people. And when they found them not, they do Jason and certain brethren unto the rulers of the city, crying, These that have turned, he turned the world upside down, are come hither also whom Jason had received, and all these all do contrary to decrees of Caesar, saying that there is another king, one Jesus. And they troubled the people and the rulers of the city. When they heard these things, and when they had taken security of Jason and of the other, they let them go. And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Celius by night 
unto Berea, who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. Therefore many of them believed, also of honorable women which were Greeks, and of men, not a few, but when the Jews of Thessalonica had knowledge that the word of God was preached of Paul at Berea, they came thither also and stirred up the people. And then immediately the brethren sent away Paul to go as it were to the sea. But Celius and Themis abroad there still. And they that conducted Paul brought him into Athens, and receiving a commandment unto Celius and Timotheus for to come to him with all speed, and they departed. Now while Paul waited for them at Athens, his spirit was stirred in him. When he saw the city wholly given to idolatry, therefore disputed he in the synagogue with the Jews and with the devout persons, and in the market daily with them that met with him. Then certain philosophers of the of the Phrygians and of the Stoic encountered him. And some said, What will this babbler say? Others some, we he see him he seemed to be a setter forth of strange gods because he preached unto them Jesus and the resurrection, and they took him and brought him unto Aeropagus, saying, May we know that this new doctrine whereof thou speakest is? For thou bringest certain strange things to our ears, we would know therefore what these things mean. For all the Athians and strangers which were there spent their time in nothing else, but either to tell or to hear some new thing. Paul's Address Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things ye are too superstitious. For as I passed by and behold your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God whom therefore ye ignorantly worship him, declare I unto you. God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands, neither is worshipped with man's hands, as though he needed anything. Seeing he giveth to all life and breath <clears throat> and all things, and had made of one blood all nations of men, for to dwell on all the face of the earth, and had determined the times before appointed, and the bounds of their habitation, that they should seek the Lord, if happily they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. As certain also of your own poets have said, For we are also his offspring, for as much then as we are the offspring of Acts chapter 18. Corinth. After these things Paul departed from Athens and came to Corinth, and found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontus, lately come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because that Claudius had commanded all Jews to depart from Rome, and came unto them, and because he was of the same craft, he abode with them and wrought for by their occupation. They were tent makers. 
and he reasoned in their synagogue every Sabbath and persuaded the Jews and the Greeks. And when Silas and Timothy were come from Macedonia, Paul was pressed in the spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus was Christ. And when they opposed themselves and blasphemed, he shook his mammon and said, Unto them your blood, your blood be upon your own head. I am clean. From henceforth I will go unto the Gentiles. And he departed thence and entered into a certain man's house, named Justice, one that worshipped God, whose house joined part to the synagogue and the Christus. And the chief ruler of the synagogue believed it on the Lord with all his house and many of the Corinthians, hearing believe it and were baptized. Then spoke the Lord to Paul in the night by a vision. Be not afraid, but speak and hold not thy peace, for I am with thee, and no man shall set on thee to hurt thee, for I have much people in this city. And he continued there a year in six months, teaching the word of God among them. And when Gallio was the deputy of Achaia, the Jews made insur insurrection with one accord against Paul and brought him to the judgment seat, saying, This fellow persuaded men to worship God contrary to the law. And when Paul was now about to open his mouth, Gal Gallio said unto the Jews, If it were a matter of wrong or wicked lewdness, O ye Jews, reason with that I should bear with you. But if it be a question of words and names and of your law, look ye to it, for I will be no judge of such matters. And he drove them from the judgment seat. Then all the Greeks took Sosthenes, the chief ruler of the synagogue, and beat him before the judgment seat. And Gallio cared for none of the, those things. And Paul, after this, tarried there yet a good while, and then took his leave of the brethren, and sailed thence into Syria. And with him Priscilla and Aquila, having shorn his head in Sensria, for he had a vow, Ephesus. And he came to Ephesus and left them there, but he himself entered into the synagogue and reasoned with the Jews. When they desired him to tarry longer time with them, he consented not but bade them farewell, saying, I must by all means keep this fast that cometh in Jerusalem, but I will return again unto you, if God will. And he sailed from Ephesus. And when he had landed at Caesarea and gone up and saluted the church, he went down to Antioch. Third missionary journey, and after he had spent some time there he departed and went over all the country of Galatea and Phrygia, Geria, in order strengthening all the disciples. And a certain Jew named Apollos, born at Alexandria, an eloquent man, and mighty in the scriptures, came to Ephesus. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord. And being fervent in the spirit, he spoke and taught diligently the things of the Lord, knowing all the baptism of John. And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue, whom when Aquila and Priscilla had heard, they took him unto them and expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. And when he was disposed, to pass into Asia, the brethren wrote, extorting 
the disciples to receive him, who, when he was come, helped them much, which had believed through grace, for he mightily convinced the Jews, and that publicly showing by the scriptures that Jesus was Christ. Chapter, Acts chapter 19, Ephesus. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, all having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus. And finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? And they said unto him, we have not so much as heard whether there be a Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, Unto what then were ye baptized? And they said, Unto John's baptism. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him, which should come from after him that is, on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of, our, and of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. And all the men were about twelve. And he went into the synagogue and spoke boldly for the space of three months, disputing and persuading the things concerning the kingdom of God. But when divers were hardened and believed not, but spoke evil of that way before the multitude, he departed from them and separated the disciples, disputing daily in the school of one thrivenous, and this continued by the space of two years, so that all they which dwelled in Asia heard the word of the Lord Jesus, both Jews and Greeks. And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul, so that from his body were brought in unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons, and diseases, the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. The certain of the Vega Bonds Jews exorcists took upon them to call over them, which had evil spirits, the name of the Lord Jesus saying, We adjure. Okay, adjure. We adjure you by Jesus, whom Paul preached. And there were seven sons of one Sceva, a Jew, and a chief of priests, which did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus, I know, and Paul, I know, but who are ye? And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them, and overcame them and prevailed against them, so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. And this was known to all the Jews and Greeks also dwelling at Ephesus, and fear fell on all of the, on them all. And the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. And many that believed came and confessed and shewed their deeds. Many of them also, which used curious arts, brought their books together and burned them before all men, and they counted the price of them and found it fifty thousand pieces of silver. So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. After these things were ended, Paul proposed in the spirit when he had passed through Macedonia and Achaia 
to go to Jerusalem saying, after I have been there, I must also see Rome. So he sent into Macedonia two of them that ministered unto them, Timothy and Estras, but he himself stayed in Asia for a season. Diana of the Eph Ephesians. And the same time there arose no small stir about that way, for a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith, which made silver shrines for Diana, brought no small gain unto the craftsmen, whom he called together with the workmen of like occupation, and said, Sirs, ye know that by this craft we have our wealth. Moreover, ye see and hear that not alone at Ephesus, but almost throughout all Asia, this Paul had persuaded and turned away much people, saying, that they be no gods which are made with hands. So that not only this our craft is in danger to be set at Na, but also that the temple of the great goddess Diana should be despised and her magnificence should be destroyed whom all Asia and the world worshipped, and when they heard these sayings, they were full of wrath, and cried out, saying, Great is Diana of the Ephesus. And the whole city was filled with confusion, and having caught Gaius and Arsaces, men of Macedonia, Paul's companions in travel, they rushed with one accord into the theater, and when Paul would have entered in unto the people, the disciples suffered him not. And certain of the chief of Asia, which were his friends, sent unto him, desiring him that he would not adventure himself into the theater. Some therefore cried one thing and some another. For the assembly was confused, and the more part knew not wherefore they were come together. And they drew Alexander out of the multitude, the Jews putting him forward, and Alexander beckoned with the hand, and would have made his defense unto the people. But when they knew that he was a Jew, all with one voice about the space of two hours cried out, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. And when the town clerk had appeased the people, he said, He men of Ephesus, what man is there that knoweth not how that the city of the Ephesians is a worshiper of the great goddess Diana? And of the image which fell down from Jupiter, seeing then that these things cannot be spoken against, ye ought to be quiet and to do nothing rashly. For ye have brought hither these men, which are neither robbers of churches nor yet blasphemers of your goddess. Wherefore, if Demetrius and the craftsmen which are with him have a matter against any man, the law is open, and there are deputies. Let them implead one another, but if ye inquire anything concerning other matters, it shall be determined in lawful assembly. For we are in danger to be called in question for this day's uproar, there being no cause whereby we may give an account of this concourse. And when he had thus spoken, he dismissed the assembly. Acts chapter 20, Macedonia. And after the uproar was seized, Paul called unto him the disciples and embraced them, and departed for to go into Macedonia. And when he had gone over those parts, 
and had given them much extortion, he came into Greece, and there abode three months, and when the Jews laid wait for him as he was about to sail into Syria, he proposed to return through Macedonia, and there accompanied him into Asia, Sapator of Berea, and of the Thessalonians, Ar Arsitus and Secundus, and Gaius of Derby, and Timotheus and of Asia, Pisius and Trophimus. These going before tarried for us at Troas. Troas, and we sailed away from Philippi after the days of unleavened bread, and came unto them to Troas in five days, where we brought abode seven days. And upon the first day of the week, when we, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow, and continued his speech until midnight. And there were many lights in the upper chamber where they were gathered together. And there sat in a window a certain young man named Ephesus, being fallen into deep sleep. And as Paul was long preaching, he sunk down with sleep and fell down from the third loft and was taken up dead. And Paul went down and fell on him, and embracing him, said, Trouble not yourselves, for his life is in him. When he therefore was come up again, and had broken bread, and eaten, and talked a long while, even till break of day, so he departed, and they brought the young man alive, and were not a little comforted. Assles and we went before to ship and sailed unto Assos, there intending to take in Paul, for so that he appointed minding himself to go for afoot. And when he met with us at Assos, we took him in and came to Malalim, and we sailed thence and came the next day over against Chios. And the next day we arrived at Samos and tarried at Tophelium. And the next day we came to Mount Maltus, for Paul had determined to sail by Ephesus, because he would not spend the time in Asia, for he hasted, if it were possible, for him to be at Jerusalem the day of Pentecost. Malatas. And from Miltus he sent to Ephesus and called the elders of the church. And when they were come to him, he said unto him, them, Ye know from the first day that I came to, into Asia, after what manner I have been with you all seasons, serving the Lord with all humility of mind and with many tears <coughs> and temptations, which, <coughs> which befell me by the lying in wait <coughs> for the, of the Jews, and how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you but have showed you and have <clears throat> taught you publicly and from house to house testifying both to the Jews and also the Greeks, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. And now behold, I bound in the spirit unto Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there. Save that the Holy Ghost were witness <clears throat> in every city, saying that bonds and afflictions abide me. But none of these things move me. Neither count I count neither count I my life dear unto myself, so 
that I might finish my course and with joy in the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. And now behold, I know that ye all among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God shall see my face no more. Wherefore I take you to record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men, for I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost had made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he had purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. Therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years I cease not to warn every one night and day with tears. And now, brethren, I command you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you inheritance among all them, <clears throat> which is are sanctified. I have coveted no man's silver or gold or apparel. Yes, ye know your, ye yourselves know that these hands <clears throat> have ministered unto my necessities and to them that were with me. I have sued you all things. How? that so laboring ye ought to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. And when he had thus spoken, he kneeled down and prayed with them all. And they all wept sore and fell on Paul's neck and kissed him, soaring most of all for the words which he spoke that they should see his face no more and they accompanied him onto the ship acts chapter 21 and it came to pass that after we were gotten from them and had launched we came with a straight course onto kus and the day following unto Rhodes, and from thence unto Patera, and finding a ship sailing over unto, unto uh, Fisanica, we went abroad and set forth. Tyra. Now, when we had discovered Cyprus, we left it on the left hand and sailed into Syria and landed at Tyra, for there the ship was to unlay her burden. And finding disciples, we tarried there seven days, who said to Paul through the Spirit that he should not go up to Jerusalem. And when we had accomplished those things, those days, we departed and went our way, and they all brought us on our way with wives and children till we were out of the city and we kneeled down on the shore and prayed and when we had <coughs> taken our leave one of another we took ship and they returned home again and when we had finished our course from Tyra we came to Pneus and saluted the brethren and abroad with them one day, Caesarea. And the next day, we that were of Paul's company departed and came into Caesarea. And we entered into the house of Philip, the evangelist, which was one of the seven and abode with him. And the same man had four daughters, virgins, which did prophesy. And, and as we tarried there many days, 
there came down from Judea a certain prophet named Abbas, Agabus. And when he was come unto us, he took Paul's girdle and bound his own hands and feet, and said, Thus said the Holy Ghost, so shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man that oweth this girdle, and shall deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. And when we heard these things, both we and they of that place besought him not to go up to Jerusalem. Then Paul answered, What mean ye to weep and to break my heart? For I am ready not to be bound only, but also to die at Jerusalem. <coughs> For the name of the Lord Jesus. And when he would not be persuaded, we see saying, The will of the Lord be done. On to Jerusalem. And after those days, we took up our car carriages and went up to Jerusalem. There went with us also certain of the disciples of Syria, and brought with him one man of Cyprus, an old disciple with whom we should lodge, Paul in Jerusalem. And when and when we were come to Jerusalem, and the brethren received us gladly. And the day following, Paul went in with us into James. And all the elders were present. And when he had saluted them, he declared particularly what things God had wrought among the Gentiles by his ministry. And when they heard it, they glorified the Lord. And said unto them, Thou seest, brother, how many thousands of Jews there were which believe, and they are all zealous of the law, and they are informed of thee, that thou teachest all the Jews which are among the Gentiles for to forsake Moses, saying that they ought not to circumcise their children, neither to walk after the customs. What is it therefore? The multitude must needs come together, for they will hear that thou art come. Do therefore this what we say to thee. We have four men which have a vow on them. Them take and purify thyself with them, and be at charges with them at that <clears throat> they may shave their heads and all may know that those things whereof they were informed concerning thee are nothing but that though thyself also walkest orderly and keepest the law as touching as touching the gentiles which believe we have written and concluded that they observe no such thing save only that they keep themselves from things offered to idols and from blood and from strangled and from fornication. Then Paul took the men and the next day purifying himself with them entered into the temple to signify the accomplishment of the days of purification until that an offering should be offered for every one of them, an uproar. And when the seven days were almost ended, the Jews which were of Asia, when they saw him in the temple, stirred up all the people and laid hands on the him, crying out, Men of Israel, help! This is the man that teacheth all men, everywhere against the people and the law. And this place and further brought Greeks also into the temple and had polluted this holy place. For thy had seen before with him in the city Trophius and Ephesian, whom they supposed that Paul had brought into the temple. And all the city was moved, and the people ran together, and they took Paul and drew him out of the temple. And forthwith the doors were shut, and as they went about to kill him, Tidings came unto the chief captain 
of the band, that all Jerusalem was in uproar. Lou immediately took soldiers and centurions and ran down onto them. And when they saw the chief captain and the soldiers, they left beating a paw. Then the chief captain came near and took him and commanded him to be bound with two chains and demanded who he was and what he had done. And some cried one thing, some another, among the multitude. And when he could not know the certainty for the tumult, he commanded him to be carried into the castle. And when he came upon the stars, the stairs, so it was that he was born of the soldiers for the violence of the people. For the multitude of the people followed after crying away with him. Paul's defense, and as Paul was to be led into the castle, he said unto the chief captain, May I speak unto thee? Who said, Canest thou speak Greek? Art not thou that Ephesian, the Egyptian, which before these days made us an uproar and led us out into the wilderness, four thousand men that were murderers? But Paul said, I am a man which I am which am a Jew of Tarsus, a city in Cilicia, a citizen of no mean city. And I beseech thee, suffer me to speak unto the people. And when he had given him license, Paul stood on the stairs and be beckoned with the hand unto the people. And when there was made a great silence, he spoke unto them, in the Hebrew tongue saying,